Hi there, in this video I'm going to have a look at making the starter motor mechanism for the Jerry Howell V-Twin and uh, Howard Osborne has been giving me some really sort of good suggestions um, based around uh, maybe uh, a Chinese starter motor for um, a scooter and um, a sprag clutch so there's uh, quite a bit of learning for me to do here and uh, I think a lot of it will be uh, sort of like trying to work it out as I go along so uh, we'll see how we get on so as a starting point I uh, bought um, a starter motor and this is for a Sinis Flare 50 scooter and um, there was no sort of specification on the uh, website when I bought it and I thought well it'll arrive and there'll be some uh, sort of like a bit of a spec sheet on it when it uh, when it gets here but <laughs> there's nothing um, apart from that number there and um, I, I know nothing about starter motors and things like that um, and I was hoping I'd be able to sort of run it using my uh, 3 amp power supply uh, but that didn't work so what I ended up doing was um, getting um, uh, sort of a, a battery pack that I've got in the back of the car just in case the uh, battery fails in the car and uh, I connected the battery pack up to this and uh, putting my uh, voltmeter and amp meter in series um, I found that on initial starting uh, this drew round about 12 amps now I've no idea how fast this spins so I need to do some testing on that um, and to work out what the gear ratios might be now when I've been trying to start the uh, V-Twin I've been using this drill uh, so I think what I'm going to do first of all is to find out how fast this runs because I know it's run, running fast enough to start the engine so I've put this uh, bit of tape on here and uh, using this uh, rough and ready sort of test meter so yeah see what it comes up with so 500 rpm but I think the battery might be a bit flat I'll just change that battery That's coming in at about 1300 RPM. To check the speed of this starter motor, I've hooked up my battery pack. Uh, put this drill chuck on with a reflective piece on it. And uh, we'll give it a whirl. It spins pretty quickly, I think. So before proceeding any further I've decided to have a look at the wiring and um, first of all what I'm going to do is get a hold of a battery, a 12 volt battery and uh, the plan is to have um, two fuses coming off this, a 1 amp fuse and a 20 amp fuse. Now the 1 amp fuse will feed through to a switch Now I'm going to have a push button switch and that will go onto uh, a relay so that's the relay I'm going to buy and it's going to connect to connection number 86 then uh, 85 will come back around and it'll go to earth I also need to uh, buy some uh, sort of uh, various gauges of wire 14 12 AWG 16 AWG and um, so once that circuits complete it will sort of complete this circuit here so coming off the battery I've got this 20 amp fuse coming into uh, connection 30 and that will come out at 87 and that will connect to the positive of the starter motor and the negative will go to uh, the uh, minus on the battery so that's the plan so uh, while I've been waiting for the uh, parts to come through the post I thought I'd uh, catch up on some outstanding items on the engine 
So what I've uh, just completed is the uh, crankcase sort of vent. There's a little check valve in there which I've made. Hopefully that will work. Um, I've uh, finished off the carburettors, so uh, put some air filters on, and uh, the crankcase vent connects up to those uh, air filters. And uh, in the top of here, this is um, a little fuel tank or a reservoir, I suppose you might call it. So that's going to be fed by an electric motor from a bigger tank underneath the engine. I need to put some thought into that. I'm not. Uh, not many ideas at the moment on that one and um, I've also just made the uh, exhaust elbows so I'll fit around here and I'm just waiting for the uh, exhaust uh, tubes to uh, arrive as well so uh, it's steadily coming along so all the parts have arrived uh, I decided on this battery. Don't know whether it's good or bad. Five amp hours, ninety amp, and I've uh, connected it all up as per my wiring diagram. And um, on here I've got twenty-five amp fuse. So that's going to the motor circuit, and this one amp fuse here going to the switch circuit so uh, give it a try so it's just a press button and um, there you go perfect so what I'll do is I'll uh, attach a round piece of metal on that and see if we can get uh, uh, an accurate refs per minute reading from it. So I've just machined this um, so I can put this uh, RPM tester on it. Seems to be a lot of vibration though but uh, I'll give it a bash. I don't know whether there's uh, an issue with the bearing on it when it gets a bit of weight on. Let's see what I can come up with. So memory there, about 10,000 RPM. Blimey. So going by that, I need something like a 1 to 10 ratio. I was expecting it to be about 1 to 4 ratio. Weird is this because when you take a bit of weight off it, it spins like that. Okay, so I've uh, cut this a lot shorter um, because I think it's uh, the vibration is due to an imbalance. So we'll give this a try. That's far better. So now I need to have a look on the internet to see what uh, kind of uh, gears I can get. Um, I'm thinking belt drive, so 10 to 1 ratio, but I'm going to have to put a, um, a sprag bearing on here I think. So uh, time to give it a bit more thought. Well I've been looking on the internet um, about my options to reduce the speed down by um, tenfold and uh, I've looked at sprockets and chains and pulleys and belts and unfortunately with this diameter here I think I can only get away with sort of like a minimum of maybe a 14 tooth um, pulley or sprocket and that would mean that on the other end I'd need something with around about 140 teeth and that ends up being a ridiculous diameter bigger than the diameter of the flywheel on the little engine so that's pretty much a no-goer. So I started looking at this uh, spindle on the motor and uh, I reckon the outside diameter is round about 723 millimeters. and to work out the mod you take the outside diameter um, is equal to the number of teeth 10 uh, plus 2 multiplied by the mod and the mod comes out as 0.6 
Um, so I thought I was on a bit of a winner here because what I could do is um, make a, a 100 tooth flywheel so, so for a 10 to 1 ratio and uh, that would result in the outside diameter being round about 61.2 millimeters which you know I could get away with that but what I don't know about is this, the pressure angle on this I don't know whether there's just a common pressure angle on all these mod uh, cutters um, but the other problem is I, I can't find any mod uh, 0.6 gear cutters in the UK uh, well I can, I can find them at about 200 quid or something daft but um, the only sort of uh, place I can get them from I think is China uh, you know a decent price so that's pretty much uh, not an option at the moment because it takes too long um, so then I thought about maybe making my own sort of reduction gearbox so I've come up with this sort of design here and uh, this this is based upon uh, 32 DP unfortunately I've got uh, a couple of gear cutters for 20 tooth and a 40 tooth and if, if I put a 20 tooth um, gear on the spindle if I drive from that 20 tooth this 40 tooth gear that gives me a 1 to 2 ratio and then if I put a gear on top of it which is a 20 tooth and drive another 40 tooth gear that's going to be another 1 to 2 ratio so that in total is going to be a 1 to 4 ratio so that get the, the RPM of this down if this is running at 100 uh, to 10,000 RPM get it down to around about 2,500 and then what I can do is on this end here I can um, drive uh, a, a smaller pulley maybe around a 10 tooth pulley and uh, put on the other end a uh, 30 tooth pulley so that I get it round uh, to round about 800 RPM at the flywheel end so that's what I'm seriously thinking about doing so um, I've come up with a, a bit of a drawing um, I, I was going to do a, a different front and rear bracket but I'm going to do both the brackets the same so this is what they'll look like I'm not too sure about the outside shape. Um, so these holes here, these will match with the holes on here. This hole being bigger, because it can go around this boss. And these two holes here will take um, a miniature ball bearing, uh, six millimeter wide, uh, nineteen millimeter in diameter and six millimetre uh, centre so that's my plan to make two, two of those and then I can run the gears inside um, so uh, I think that's what I'm going to go with so I've just uh, stuck three sheets of aluminium together one of those will be the uh, front and the other two I think will be the back and uh, I've marked it up it's just a matter of um, drilling and uh, reaming some holes. Well it was only a matter of uh, doing a bit of cutting and drilling out and uh, this is what I've ended up with. So that'll be the back piece that will fit onto here. Unfortunately these holes here don't, don't line up <laughs> which I found out later. Um, this one's a little bit offset. So that will go on like that and then this with some spacers will bolt on like that so I think what I need to do now is to uh, make some gears and once I've made the gears the width of the gears will determine sort of how wide these spacers need to be but, uh, hopefully it'll work out alright okay so I've uh, just made some gear blanks and uh, these are obviously the 40 tooth ones and uh, the OD is calculated by taking 40 adding 2 to it and dividing it by uh, 32 
and that comes in at 1.3125 and uh, the smaller gears that will go on the um, motor shaft these are 20 tooth or there will be and uh, the OD being calculated by uh, adding 2 to 20 which is 22 dividing by 32 and that gives 0.6875 in diameter so um, the idea will be that once I've made these gears this gear here will lock tight onto that like that so uh, that's the plan okay so now to cut some gears um, I've got my rotary table here, my World of Ward controller and what I need to do first of all is make sure that we're on centre so I've just turned this down on the lathe and then I've just adjusted the height of this to make sure that that points on centre I've also just put a felt tip mark on both sides to show me the alignment make sure that that's spot on as well and uh, the next thing is to get this cutter on centre that's looking pretty good okay so I've set the stops on my uh, table for the x-axis I've uh, touched the cutter on the blank and then I've moved the table in let me see for a 32 dp gear it's 67 thou so 67 thou I've set the world of ward controller to uh, 40 divisions because we've got 40 teeth and um, just take up any slack any backlash or anything lock the table and uh, give it a try. Okay. What I've done is I've uh, loctited this these two gears onto this shaft here. The shaft is a nice press fit into that bearing there. That turns nicely. And on this one, I've loctited this gear onto this shaft, and that's a press fit in there. That will drive a small pulley. So the plan is to join those pieces together and put these little spaces between. But so once I've done that I'll get back to you. Well that seems to have worked out alright. Gears engage very well. I've made a bit of a foot for it. So we'll give it a test I think. Okay so I've uh, rigged it up to the battery and uh, we'll see what speed it runs at now. about 4500 rpm so that must mean that this motor runs at about 18,000 rpm I was hoping it would be running around about 2500 now I've ordered um, some pulleys and a, and a belt and uh, I've only gone for a, a 2 to 1 ratio 
so it's only going to bring it down to about 2000 rpm which might be a bit uh, a bit on the quick side um, but anyway uh, we'll see what it looks like when I uh, attach it to the engine okay so I had a rethink regarding pulleys and I managed to uh, get hold of uh, a couple of AT5 pulleys now this is a 48 tooth pulley and that's a 12 tooth pulley that's been loctited onto the shaft and uh, that will give me a 4 to 1 ratio so hopefully I'll get the revs down to around about a thousand uh, hopefully <laughs> and uh, what I've done is I've opened this one up and put a sprag bearing in there and that's a CSK 22pp and I've made this fixture here and this will fix onto this boss here like that and the electric motor will turn this gear here which in, in turn will turn the flywheel of the engine once the engine fires um, the flywheel will go faster than this and uh, it'll sort of engage, disengage from the electric motor bear in mind this electric motor is it's just um, pressed out anyway uh, so fingers crossed it'll uh, turn out okay and uh, these um, uh, take 10 millimeter wide belts and this is a 420 millimeter belt so the plan is um, I'm going to make a box for this engine to go on top of and this will sit underneath the engine inside the box well uh, it seems to have assembled okay um, nicely out of the way this will move forward in the box and uh, all the gubbins will go behind here and uh, we'll give it a try I've just put some reflective tape on here one thousand rpm that's perfect well that was a bit more complicated than I thought it would be and I think one of the main problems is um, the starter motors, a lot of starter motors on the market don't have any specifications so um, a lot don't tell you the RPM or the uh, torque that they're delivering uh, so it's a bit of a gamble and I'd like to thank Howard and uh, Adam uh, my uh, go-to electronics expert for uh, trying to help and identify an appropriate uh, motor. I'm sure there must be some geared, um, gear-headed motors uh, around. And um, I think some of these um, starter motors for these uh, nitro aeroplanes, I think some of them, some of them might be, uh, you know, a good option. But I wasn't willing to sort of pay, you know, 80 or 100 pound on something that I wasn't too confident that would work. Uh, but it, I sort of got there in the, in the end, um, it, it's, I don't know, it's, it's a bit on the noisy side, um, but it does get the um, rotation down to, uh, you know, reasonable speed, and, uh, you know, for, for a matter of just running it for a few seconds to start the engine, it shouldn't be a problem, and also thanks to Howard pointing me in the direction of um, the, the sprag bearings they, they seem to work really well um, but anyway I, I hope um, it should work out okay and uh, I think what I need to do next the, the final sort of piece in the jigsaw is to uh, look at the fuel delivery system and uh, Jerry Howell suggests using an electric motor and a pump to pump fuel uh, out of um, sort of a tank somewhere and uh, into this sort of re little reservoir at the top uh, so I've not many ideas on that at the moment uh, so I need to give that one some thought uh, but anyway I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I hope to see you later